In this section, I'm going to show you where you could download the MATLAB DIC program from. So just go to Google and type in MATLAB DIC. And uh, the first few results would be uh, from MATLAB uh, Central. And click on the first link. And you can download uh, the files from uh, by clicking this button over here. Uh, once you download the files, it's in the zip format. So go ahead and download it. Uh, I've already downloaded mine. Um, and then wherever your downloads are located, you should be able to uh, pull it up and find two folders, both of them zipped. Uh, go ahead and unzip them to wherever you want. And then let's take a look at them right here. So I've gone ahead and unzipped it and labeled it MATLAB DIC Christoph Ebo. Um, the first folder is just a uh, a selection of slides and examples um, and it also has an explanation on how to uh, how to run these examples in the program uh, the second folder contains the actual DICM files um, it also contains an HTML uh, instructional document which I would recommend reading um, so once you've downloaded all that and unzip uh, your files uh, you're ready to run them in MATLAB so that's what we'll be doing next So here I'm going to show you how to run the MATLAB files uh, for your DIC analysis. Uh, the first thing you do is uh, add uh, the folder uh, which contains your M files to the path in MATLAB. So go ahead and open uh, the folder wherever you, it's located. Uh, right click and say add to path, selected folders and subfolders. So I'm just going to open this up to show you um, the files. And so here are my my M files. Um, so for this program, uh, your current directory has to be set to the folder containing your images. So um, are we going to do that next? Um, set our current directory to wherever uh, my images are located. So let me go ahead and open that up to um, DS Interior Instructional Videos. I see images. So I have about 50 images um, that's displayed here. Uh, so I'm ready to go. Okay. So the first the first program you run is called uh, File List Generator. So I'm going to type in File List Generator and hit Enter. So this program uh, creates the list of images. Um, that you have saved um, and stores it in a in a data file. So the a menu window pops up, and I'm gonna uh, select automatically when it asks me how I want to create uh, the file name list. So let me hit automatic. All right. It then opens up uh, a window which asks you to open the first image. Um, so I'm gonna open. Uh, I'm gonna click on my first image, titled Frame One, and hit open. The second window will ask you to save the, the file file name list uh, in the same image directory. So I'm going to go ahead and say save. And then it also asks you if you want to extract the time from the images. But since my images have been derived from video, the time signature associated with those images are not accurate to my experimental time. So I'm going to go ahead and say no for now. All right. So what this does, if you notice on the left here, it creates a MATLAB file titled file name list. And it's important to store this, store this file in the same directory as uh, your images and also not change uh, the file name when you're saving file name list because uh, it's being uh, referenced by other programs um, in, the, in, the, in the MATLAB process. Next, we need to create a grid uh, for our tracking program to work. Uh, so you do that by running the program called uh, Grid Generator. So I'm going to type in Grid Generator, hit Enter. It asks you to select the base image, which is typically uh, your first image. So I'm going to click on my first image and set that as my base image. It should be opening it up right now, so there you go. Um, by default, it always asks you if you want to load the old grid, and I typically say no. 
unless you want to perform uh, if, unless you want to repeat uh, the same process uh, a second time but for now let's say no okay let me bring this down here uh, the next question I'll ask you is to define the shape of your region of interest and for this example I'm going to go ahead with rectangular and if I can maximize this window um, it gives you a little instruction on the top of the window so pretty much you define the diagonal of the, of your rectangular region of interest. So I'm going to click down here once and click to the top corner and that's my region of interest. Uh, the next thing it asks you is for your grid resolution um, so that means uh, or what that means is you define how far apart each grid marker is going to be so let's see what it sh gives us when we set it uh, to 50 for X and 50 for Y so you can see the blue markers um, I think these are fairly widely spaced so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try and get it uh, try and get a, a finer grid so I'm could then ask you over here if you're satisfied with this grid or if you want to use this grid so if you're not satisfied with it uh, click go back to main menu so we do that and we kind of repeat the same process of defining a rectangular grid and I'm going to give it a finer resolution uh, 30 by 30 and so now you can see a finer grid so at every 30 pixels in the X direction and the Y direction it places a grid and so I'm satisfied with this grid and I'm going to go ahead and click yes when it asks me if I want to use this grid once you've defined your grid uh, you can go ahead and hit end over here and that's it. So now we're going to run the program that does the actual correlation task. So what this program does is that it studies each region or each subset uh, in the grid that we defined earlier and tries to locate that region in the subsequent image. So once that region is located, it places a marker there. Um, so it does that for each image and these marker locations uh, get stored in separate files um, and from these files uh, we get our displacement data so let's go ahead and do that and let's take a look at what it looks like so the program is called automate image so let's type that in automate image hit enter right so here you can see um, the image is being processed uh, you see you notice two markers uh, the green and the red so the green markers are the original location on the base image and the red markers you'll notice are moving uh, corresponding to each image so right now we're on image 13 14 15 and you notice how the red markers are moving down um, along with uh, along with our sample moving down so this is what uh, the tracking program does you'll also notice that the regions that don't have a well-defined speckle aren't well tracked um, so there's always room for improvement there and there is also um, movement uh, of regions that overlap each other um, so that's also another source of error which can be corrected so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and watch this until the last image and it's almost getting done and that would conclude uh, the correlation program and how it runs all right So the, in our concluding step, we'll be displaying our displacement data. Um, so what you need to do for that is to type in the program displacement, hit enter. It then asks you to open up a couple of files. So it says open up validx.dat. So click on validx. Open that up. Open up valid y. And then it pulls up a menu which allows you to view your results in, uh, in, a, in a variety of ways. Um, the one I'm going to show you right now is the 3D plot for displacement. Uh, by default, um, the program displays the displacement in the X direction. What I'd like to show you is uh, the displacement in the Y direction since I did a bending test. So you can do that by clicking this button called Rotate Orientation. Um, so let's go and do that. And now let me display 
uh, my my data. Um, it, it asks you if you want to create a video. For now, I'm going to say no. So there you go. Well, I guess this one is pretty quick. Um, let me go ahead and show that to you again. And I'll say yes to create a video just because it slows down the display a little bit. So here you see our grid locations uh, corresponding to each image. So you notice the image number increasing. Um, it has the position, it has the X position and the Y position, and the, the displacement uh, displayed over here is uh, your, the displacement in the Y direction of your image. So since I had a bending test, um, most uh, the most observable displacement was in the Y direction, which you can see the bending profile increase over here. So that's kind of how you track your uh, marker displacement and get your full field uh, displacement data using this program.